today I'm going to help try and answer the question, how were the COVID-19 vaccines developed so quickly? Certainly when working as a doctor, this has been one of the most common objections that I've found when speaking to patients about receiving the vaccine and one of the reasons why they might be reluctant. Let's examine that question today because thankfully there are answers. Just to get a quick disclaimer out of the way that some people online seem to be extremely bothered by, I work as a doctor in the NHS. I have no relationships pre-existing or ongoing with any pharmaceutical company of any kind and I have no vested interest in COVID vaccines. My salary is completely unaffected by the number of people that get vaccinated or don't. So the place that I want to start with this is that many people, I think quite reasonably, have the idea that vaccines take years and years and years to develop. And that's because the ones that we're used to hearing about usually do. To take any medical product to market, whether that is a drug, a vaccine, a new supplement, whatever medical product you like, it can take anywhere up to and beyond 15 years, which accounts for a number of steps, including things like research and development, which we sometimes call R&D, clinical trials, ethical review, marketing authorization, actually manufacturing the thing you're interested in, marketing it, in short, we have a combination of science and experimentation on the one side and then red tape which governs that science and experimentation on the other. So let's take a look at some of the ways in which production and development of the COVID-19 vaccines has been accelerated. Firstly, we can remember that coronaviruses are not a novel discovery. We have 50 years of existing data on various coronaviruses, including those that cause the common cold and those concerned in previous outbreaks and pandemics, things like SARS and MERS. We therefore already knew about the most important elements of these viruses including things like the spike proteins and how they influence viral replication, and thus what would make a good target for a potential vaccine. Secondly, we already had the infrastructure for mass manufacture of antiviral vaccines in place. The infectious disease scientists and epidemiologists that work on this kind of problem have long, long predicted repeated viral outbreaks, and it was an inevitability that something like this was going to happen. Because of that, we already had the manufacturing capacity to build enormous amounts of a vaccine if we needed one. This in turn eliminates all that time that it takes to build these facilities. We already had them in place, so as soon as the designs were ready, we could get to building. Then thirdly, and ever so important, is the worldwide sharing of information. In a global pandemic where this viral agent poses a very real risk, risk to virtually everybody around the world, it's actually in the best interests of most, if not all, countries around the world to pool all of the data as accurately and quickly and as easily accessibly as we can. Because not only does this help with the development side, but you can start to pick up on things like adverse reactions safety problems and the efficacy of the vaccine from all around the world. And this is, of course, what we've seen. I think one of the more interesting aspects of this that we can also think about is trial design and testing. Normally, clinical trials, again, not just for vaccines, but for any drug, are done in a series of steps, one after another by convention. You will have heard of phase one, phase two, phase three and phase four clinical trials and so on. I'm gonna cover this properly in another video. But in the case of developing COVID-19 vaccines, and actually several previous vaccines, it's possible to actually overlap the stages of these trials or to run them concurrently, which massively reduces the time that it takes to gather your data. And this is crucial, and please, pay attention to this, this does not mean that steps are being skipped. They're simply being done at the same time and therefore much more quickly and much more efficiently. And the reason that this works is because the trials are examining different things. Your research questions and your outcomes are different in each trial. So actually, strictly speaking, you don't need to run your trials one after another. And not only that, but in practicality, most of this waiting time is actually between trials. It's wrong to suggest that if a vaccine takes 10 years to develop, that that means 10 years of testing has taken place. The vast majority of time is actually empty space where nothing is happening, while the researchers involved are waiting for ethical approval, for grants to be approved, feedback and correspondence going backwards and forwards, basically the red tape. And in this case, it's most of that red tape that's been eliminated. The penultimate point that I want to raise is that of funding, because this goes hand in hand with the previous point. There was, for obvious reasons, an unbelievable amount of funding pumped very rapidly into the development of COVID-19 vaccines, as well as that global collaboration and sharing of data that I talked about before. 
this is probably the catalyst of all catalysts for very, very rapid research and development. Because we're now making efforts to remove any and all delays. Business days aren't a thing anymore. You've now just got scientists all around the world working round the clock 24 seven trying to find an answer. And not only that, but many potential solutions being worked on at the same time, which is how we ended up with several different candidate vaccines. And we now have four or five that are being used and deployed because they work. But actually the final thing that I want to touch on for this video, and believe me, I've not covered every way in which vaccine development was sped up, but I think this is the one that speaks to humanity a little bit. And the answer lies with you, the people watching this video who signed up for the clinical trials. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people were willing to receive this experimental treatment. And during the clinical trials, it was an experimental treatment. And this has led to enormous trial cohorts that were not only very large in size, so the quality of data that you tend to get is very good, it meant that we could run lots of trials simultaneously and collect data very quickly. And that's why I think that's my favorite reason, because it speaks to the effort that we can all make when we do work together and try to do something for the good of humanity. We now, in the space of two to three years, have some of the most extensively studied medicines in history. So that is how COVID-19 vaccine development was sped up and performed so quickly without skipping any safety checks. Thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out ollieburton.com and you can support me using the Ko-Fi link in the video description. Take care and I'll see you next time.